What I would like is at least a few characters. Their very Muslimness is not a point of critique. He's Muslim, but he doesn't practice. Oh, so he's okay. I want to see a character who's a practicing Muslim and it's not a big deal. I think there's room for, for non-practicing Muslims or, or people who are not as diligent in their practice. But what I want is something that says, yeah, but even if you practice, that's not a warning sign. Most Muslims pray. Most Muslims don't eat pork and whatever. And it's like not a big deal. I would like to see more of that. Okay, salam alaikum. How are you doing? Good, good. Thank you for having me. Alaikum salam. No, I appreciate you coming on. Really appreciate your time. Um, I was just saying before we started, and I was actually listening to your your podcast with uh, I think it was Leila, uh, Leila on uh, Muslims doing things. Um, even she was quite surprised that you know uh, there is another Muslim film critic uh, in the realm, which I think is absolutely phenomenal. Um, I grew up literally religiously just reading film reviews. That was my thing. That's all I would ever do. Uh, and it's funny because we always have this conversation about. Um, you know, representation uh, in film and representation of Muslims in, in you know, in, in, in behind the camera, in front of the camera. And we never think about the world of, uh, you know, the critics world, which is uh, absolutely crazy <laughs> these days. Uh, as you can see in this post, Rotten Tomatoes, uh, weird uh, kind of world that we live in. Um, I actually wanted to start off just by asking you about um, uh, Jurassic World Dominion. I know it's a bit of a segue, um, but I think it's an interesting conversation because it shows like in this climate, there's such a disparity, I think, between the critics and the viewers, um, you know, uh, firstly, what's your thoughts on the film? I'm interested to know that. And secondly, what do you think about this whole like weird uh, new world, new age of, 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 of film going that ruin where the critics are usually on one side and the, and the viewers sometimes can be on the other? Yeah, well, 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 two things. Uh, as far as my reaction to the film, I'll say I, I enjoyed it. I'm, I'm a, I've said before, I'm kind of an easy mark when it comes to the Jurassic films, all of them, because uh, if you if you show me realistic looking dinosaurs and people running from dinosaurs and getting eaten by dinosaurs, <laughs> I'm good. That checks all the boxes for me. Yeah, I'm 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 fine with that. You know, um, and and to the second point, I would say you know it 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 isn't as new a phenomenon as you'd think. I mean, I I grew up in a world where we expected the critics to be rough on the big blockbuster films and. That was part of that was what was written on the tin. I mean, we knew that going in, you know, like I, I didn't watch, uh, you know, Con Air expecting uh, a critical acclaim, you know, but I, I enjoy it for what it is. And so it, it is I, I think I think what we're seeing here is a reflection of, you know, what, what an, an older norm. It's been kind of broken up because I think uh, I think people have higher expectations of, uh, of blockbusters or they have higher expectations right. of critical appraisal of blockbusters but uh I, I think i think in reaction to this film in particular i feel like it uh, some of it has been a bit overblown where uh some 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 critics are sort of feeling as if the movie affronted them in a very deeply personal way you know it it caused harm to their family and i'm kind of <laughs> i mean what do you what do you say like i mean if that's a genuine reaction that's a genuine reaction but i just I'm I'm missing that because I, it it's it doesn't it seems harmless to me at at worst it's it's disposable two hours and change you know mm. uh, so that that has been kind of funny over the last week or so just looking at the reactions to it <laughs> you, you know it's kind of kind of crazy like I'm a huge as you can tell Jurassic Park fan <laughs> that was like the the movie I literally grew up on and like I, I still remember that shirt today. Huh? Yeah, again? <laughs> so I purposely wore that shirt today, huh? Bro, it's Jurassic Dominion uh, month, bro. Everyone wears the whole month. Um, yeah, no, like, like, literally, like, I, I'm telling you, like, I, I still remember walking out of Jurassic Park 3 when I was, like, 11 years old or 10 years old mm -hmm. and thinking, oh, I can't wait for number four. And right. I would, like, read all the upcoming, like, oh, here's the inside uh, information about when the fourth one's coming out. And I remember walking into Jurassic World in 2015 I'm, I'm thinking i waited 14 years literally right. for this movie so like I, i'm a really like it, it's really deeply entrenched into to me I, I mean even like from a from a perspective of me like being a freelance uh filmmaker in my in my working life uh having a love of film all of that stems from this film so it's a very like personal thing to me and mm -hmm. it's weird because I, I walked out of that film thinking i don't know what to feel i'm very confused because mm -hmm. it was a, a lot most of it was quite fun it was obviously very silly but a lot of it was very fun I also didn't like it, and I feel like Hollywood's moving. This is toward, uh, Dominion we're talking about. Yeah, Dominion specifically. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I feel like Hollywood's moving more toward this. Well, not all of Hollywood, but some of Hollywood's moving more toward this kind of like Fast and Furious. If we make it silly and full of action and fun, 
it's going to make a lot of money. We don't have to worry mm-hmm. about, you know, right. kind of appe- appeasing yeah. the critics or making you know, some sort of film the tour, basically. Um, so I, I wonder, I'm curious to, 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 to know what your thoughts are on that kind of in this like weird world that we live in, which is post Marvel, uh, you know, uh, post Fast mm-hmm. and Furious. Because I say it's because I, I rewatched the film yesterday, Jurassic, Jurassic Park. And like I, a part of me is thinking that that age of blockbuster is over. Like you can't make a, a film like that anymore and, and, and expect to make, you know, a billion dollars. I, I don't think anyway. Um, what's your kind of perspective on, on that? If you don't want me well, it's interesting. Yeah, I, I you know, I've, sa- I've said about the Jurassic films uh, for a long time. I've said I, I tend to put, I put the first movie in its own little box. I put it up on the shelf and and I've been sort of more more forgiving of the sequels because i'm just kind of like you know i i don't even expect anything to replicate that experience what that was like and and part of that is is the age when i saw it you know i was what was i was uh, 13 i think when it came out uh and part of it is just i you know that the the film itself you know that that the very first scene when they see the dinosaurs i mean that's like that's a film class in and of itself it's like a three-minute film class everything and part of that is because it's Steven Spielberg. Part of that is because right. it was, you know, the first really attempt at doing effects like that. Um, and so I've, I've, I've had a bit of a sliding scale when it comes to sequels. Uh, I would say that that in general, there's always been this this battle between the big, dumb, fun blockbusters and the more intelligent blockbusters. And they, they, they have tended to coexist, you know, so we're seeing it right now it's a perfect example at the, at the box office right now we've got jurassic world and we have top gun maverick right. and i think i think top gun is an example where i mean the critics are are just over the moon for it but you look at those audience scores i mean people are loving it too right so mm. so um and it's funny because T- top gun maverick i think is a better movie than the first one which mm. w- was not particularly critically uh beloved you know it's it's yeah. Uh, it's become a beloved movie, but it wasn't at the time, and and so I think there's room there, there's there's room for all kinds. You know, I think I think when when we look at just the the big sort of blockbuster school of filmmaking, yes, no doubt there is uh, th- there are those Fast and Furious movies, and yes, they are getting the IQ is dropping with each one. Uh, however, there's there's other stuff too. You know, I mean, and yeah. there's other stuff that's playing just as widely. You know. Yeah. I mean the the Batman earlier this year like that was for sure yeah good uh, example that was a good four quadrant movie well not four quadrant but it, it was appealing to a wide audience and mm. and it was it was a uh, pretty smart you know well made and it it checked a lot of the boxes amazing I actually wanted to to ask you about um, your own kind of first uh, experience uh, where you fell in love with film because I feel like every film lover has that for me it was Jurassic Park and 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 <laughs> there's a lot of like memories that that, that go into that even like. You know, it's funny because, like, I remember, uh, I, I can still remember as a child, it must be like three or four, going to my grandparents' house and they'd have that VHS tape they bought from Malaysia or somewhere, pirated, <laughs> uh, and, they, and, you know, and and I'd basically literally watch it every single weekend. And I, I, I can, it, it's weird because film then supersedes this, you know, it's a Hollywood blockbuster or it's a piece of art or it's a piece of entertainment. Now it's part of your memory. You know, I can I can yeah. remember my grandmother's, my grandparents' house. I can remember the area. I can remember the memories I had there. It, it influenced so much of my life going forward. So I mean, it's it's crazy how how the power that film has um, on you. And I love the way you talk about film. So I'm very interested to know when that kind of love of film seeped into you at a young age, and and how you kind of uh, began that journey of what would eventually become you becoming a film critic and a film lover. Well, you know, I, I I've often said that I was a Star Wars fan um, uh, from the cradle. You know, I was I was born in '79. My brother was uh, is uh, five years older than me, so he was already a Star Wars fan. So I just sort of became a fan by osmosis. And so I, my first memory of movies is some combination of Star Wars and The Empire Strikes Back. Mm-hmm. And then, and that era, we're talking late seventies, early eighties, was really this bumper crop of of these sci-fi blockbuster films that that some succeeded, some didn't. But Tron, uh, the Black Hole uh, from Disney, the first two Superman films, uh, uh, King Kong from from nineteen seventy eight. You know, so so all of these, I was exposed to these at a very young age, and so they sort of they provided the 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 keystones of my experience. You know, and one thing I've I've said often is when I uh, I, I lived in Saudi Arabia. My, my family and I, we moved to Saudi Arabia in 1983. So very shortly uh, before Return of the Jedi came out. And so 
I had all this Return of the Jedi merchandise. I had a belt and a you know a breakfast, a bowl of cereal and stuff because all the stuff you know is coming out. So like those are my memories from being a kid. But when we were over there in Saudi Arabia, you know, we had all these movies on tape, so we just watched them again and again. Uh, they were probably uh, you know uh, a bootleg too. <laughs> you know, that's what that's what Daisy families do, right? Um, but when I learned to read, you know, I went to an American school over there and they had a, a, a library for for uh, the younger grades. And they had a ser- they had a set of books that were the the making of the universal monster movies. So Frankenstein, Dracula, actually, it wasn't even just universal. It was like King Kong and Godzilla and all the classic monsters, basically. And there were these, these books, it was like the, the story of the film and then all the making up. And I just devoured these things, you know? So I'm like, you know, five or six. And I just, all the, you know, all the stuff about how they made the stop motion armatures and, and the various effects artists. And, you know, uh, I knew, I knew these names. I knew Phil Tippett and Stan Winston, all these people Mm. who, as a, as a five or six year old, you know, because that, that was the part of filmmaking that I was so interested in. It wasn't the movie. It it was the movie itself, but it was also, how do they do it? You know? And I feel like that's the, you, you know, the type of kid you are based on what you care about with a movie is it hey this was really cool and that was a good experience or it's how did they make it like it's two types Mm. of kids and i see it with my own kids by the way i have four boys Mm. and and some of them whenever we finish watching a movie they're like go to youtube and put on the the behind the scenes stuff and as soon as i put on the behind the scenes stuff the two of the four will take off and go do something else (laughs) so you know uh but that but that that was my experience growing up in saudi arabia and um the the film that really uh, I what I consider my favorite movie of all time is Planet of the Apes, the 1968 movie, and oh. that was a film that 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 to me is the first time I can really remember watching a film and then analyzing the film. Hmm. And you know, I was probably uh, ten or eleven or younger thereabouts, but just really paying attention. Oh, like you know, with this they're they're making a you know, it's a metaphor for racism and they're talking about the Vietnam war and all this stuff. And this is, this is me looking at the layers, you know, and, and so that's what moved me towards wanting to, to uh, move into critical appraisals and things like that. You know, but when I was in high school, I started a a planet of the apes fanzine and I would publish reviews of those films and I would, uh, you know, do articles and, and, and original fiction, all this type of stuff. And, and, I only bring that up because, you know, uh, a couple of years ago, I had opportunity to meet Matt Reeves, who oh, directed, wow. well, he just did the Batman, but before that, he right. did the, the, the two ape uh, prequel films. And I was like, this is what I did in high school. And I'm just imagining what high school me would think, you know, you being able to see this, <laughs> you know, show to the director of the films now. Uh, but, the, you know, then I started writing uh, reviews for my for my high school paper. And, and uh, what you said earlier about reading reviews just sort of, devouring them as a kid i mean that was me you know every mm. friday morning i would log on to the chicago sun times website and i would read roger ebert oh. uh, i grew up reading right. roger ebert i still i still to this day I've, I've said before that his specific turns of phrase and reviews like i can still remember i still remember like oh roger ebert said this in his review of whatever like i remember specifically how he said something and that's he had a very very big impact on my life you know that's mm. my great regret is i never I, I attended screenings with him when I was in Chicago, but I never got to chat with him. And that's, I, I regret that because I, obviously that, uh, that opportunity is lost now forever. You, you mentioned, I, actually, I was actually going to ask you about growing up in Saudi Arabia and you, and you mentioned, I don't know if this is the case or not, um, but I'm interested to know um, whether or not growing up in Saudi Arabia, which is, you know, known to be a more conservative society, um, had perhaps an impact on your love of film that, maybe i don't know changed it stinted it i'm just i'm interested to know like what kind of because you obviously you didn't just grow up there you went from america to Saudi Arabia, right and then you came back yeah. so like what was that like transition like uh like in the lens of you know you growing into your love of film and, hmm. and the arts yeah no i well well going there wasn't as difficult of a transition because i was so mm-hmm. little so you just sort of take things at face value but the, you know when when we were living there we were there for about 10 years you know my family would come back uh to the states every year so we had like okay. our annual american vacation which is about three weeks or so give or take and so it would be like i'd look forward to coming back and seeing what are the new movies that are out you know mm-hmm. and this is pre-internet pre all that stuff so you would just you would find out when you were there you know i always point to like in in 1989 i remember 
we we flew there in the summer of 89 and the in-flight magazine had a picture of uh batman the the michael keaton batman and that was the first time i saw that yeah. and, and you know what i mean like it's it's hard to think of it in this internet age where everything's yeah. like oh here's a here's somebody snuck on set and here's a picture from the distance no this is the first time you're seeing this and you're like this thing's coming out in a few weeks and i remember just it it absolutely blew my hair back because my concept of batman was adam west hmm. wearing you know the 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 spandex suit and whatnot and uh of course, ironically, our trip to our trip to Chicago that summer was such that we left uh, like four days before Batman came out. Oh no! So <laughs> just missed it, and I, <laughs> and I was so I was so engulfed in the hype. I had the T-shirt. In fact, I still have the T-shirt now that I think about it. Look at this. Oh, nice! Wow. Is that the <laughs> this is not t-shirt? the same T-shirt, but I, I just realized say. it is a Batman '89 T-shirt. <laughs> I was kind of you're wearing your Jurassic shirt. I'm wearing, you know, both of our there formative experiences. Beautiful. Right? I'm so underdressed here, man. Yeah, I know <laughs> you are. <man. laughs> I still have I I still have in my garage the the novelization that I got back oh, in 1989 wow. of that movie. I still have the original version of that um but that that was kind of the, you know when i think of my own like awareness of film i think that was the first time i really i became like oh you know i want to read all the articles about it and i see what's going on and you know and and it was like a pre is a forerunner of sort of internet culture now for me it started there it started in 89 and you know when i started when i started writing for my paper for my high school paper uh initially before i even started doing reviews i was doing like a movie news column mm-hmm so I, and so it's like, oh, Steven Spielberg is doing the sequel to Jurassic Park. You know, they're saying it's going to be called The Lost World or whatever, like stuff like that. <laughs> you know, this was me, wow. probably like a sophomore in high school. That's pretty cool. <laughs> wow. That's the thing. Go ahead. Oh, uh, man. I have like so much going in my head right now in the, in the past like 15 minutes just listening to you and your plethora, plethora of knowledge. Um, <laughs> oh, no. so, I, don't, I don't know where to, where to start, but there's like, like 50 million questions in my head, right? So, um, you know, I, I guess I'll, I'll take it back to the beginning where we were talking about, you know, just critiques of films and, and like the industry and whatnot. You know, I, I kind of just want to get a glimpse of like, you know, does does critiquing films have anything to do with the amount that they make? Hmm. It shouldn't. It shouldn't at all. Right. Uh, ultimately, as a critic, what you're trying to do is offer a window into your perspective. So right. it, it, it's, it's as simple as here's what I thought. And uh, what I often say is that a, a, a single review doesn't mean much without knowledge of that person's body of work, the, 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 the writer's body, the, the, the critic's body of work. Right? Because what you're looking for is somebody who you can say, oh, yeah, I, I tend to agree with this person's perspective or I, you know, right. like if, if there's a critic who I disagree with all the time, then I'm less likely to, to read their work. That's not to say that their work isn't good or uh, might not even have, uh, uh, you know, points that are valuable. But if, if I consistently disagree, then then I'm just not going to look to them. Right. If you're looking to a critic for, well, should I watch this or not? You hope it's the same relationship they have with a friend, right? Somebody who trusts to say, well, what do you think? Well, I have this work for me this not so much and you know you offer that uh so the money doesn't enter into it or it shouldn't it certainly doesn't for me you know i've Mm -hmm. given positive reviews to flops uh and i've given uh negative reviews to mega blockbusters i mean it's all it's all in there you know and then i'm here again with 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 jurassic world dominion i'm i'm in sort of the minority where i'm like "Eh, it's all right i enjoyed it you know (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, no, that, that, that's a that's a great insight. And then I guess uh, Nuri, do you have anything there before I move on to my next? Just, just I'm, just, I'm just following the, the last ten minutes. Yeah, yeah. I, no, no, I, I held questions in each segment. <laughs> I just want to answer them now. No, no just a quick one off back of what you said. It, it, it's weird because, like, you know, whenever we bring up like a filmmaker, for example, here on the show, or or, or, or someone who's worked in a a show or, or a film, I'm hesitant in criti- critiquing the show to them to their face because, yeah. like, they spent two years of their life writing yeah, this or you know you know carrying Ari Cam- God knows what they're doing to, to make this show good right I don't, yeah. I don't want to come and say oh by the way it was, wasn't good you know so yeah. like it, it, from that kind of perspective I don't want to say is it difficult but is it like I mean how much of like a how, how, how much of like a um, no responsibility I don't know what the, the word I'm looking for how much of an awareness do you have of it sounds really petty to say upsetting the feelings of yeah. uh, you no, know, no, that's a, really a, a filmmaker who, who who worked, let's say, for example, two years on what could have been their dream project, you know? Yeah. No, you no, broke that's my a... heart. Don't worry about it. <laughs> you already <laughs> broke my heart. <laughs> that's, no, no, that's a, that's a really good question. I, I 
I don't like having to absolutely demolish a movie. And I certainly don't, I, I don't think of it as a sport. You know, I, mm. I, my approach is always, my, my review is written such that I'm not framing it any differently than if I'm sitting at a Starbucks with the filmmaker mm. and they're like, can you give me an honest critique? I'll, I'll, that's the way I try to approach it. I'm like, if my, my point is this, if they read my review, even if it's a negative, I would hope they come away with, Oh, but I see what they're saying about this. Yeah. This didn't, Oh, but, but they like this or whatever, you know, I, I want to be as well-rounded as possible. And, and part of that is people's feelings because it is people's work, but also it's just, I, you know, I, I think so much of uh, crit film criticism, especially these days in the internet culture has become such a blood sport and it's it's it feels like it's driven to drive engagement and you know i use the term uh, online recently performative vitriol mm. people just kind of flagellating and i i don't find that helpful you know and the, and the other uh uh factor for me is you know i have a a film review podcast that i co-host with a partner his name is brian hall who he works in the industry he's a he's a screenwriter he's a television writer and so his perspective is from that from that side of things from the creative side and so whenever we approach it uh, and i this is something he says i'm taking credit but he's he says i always want to see the best version of whatever movie i'm watching mm -hmm. so so he tries to approach it that he goes in hoping it's the best version and if it's not at least he can say well i liked this and i like that and just kind of uh, offer something that's that's uh, well-rounded a critique that's well-rounded and it's not just about lining up and just taking a whack at it nice. yeah i think you know from a from a filmmaker's perspective i think we kind of understand that when we create something um you know it's not for everybody right we're, we're creating we're, we're bringing something that's close to us to life and yeah. there's a, a chunk of people that don't like it and a chunk of people that do like it i think i think at least filmmakers like myself uh, do it more for ourselves than anything yeah. else, right? It's just just the aspect of creating something. Um, so that's just kind of my perspective. No, I think uh, it's a good perspective. Ahead. I mean, and and you're 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 uh, you're representing a part of your identity, and you hope you hope that there will be people out there who can relate to it or or find some kinship in it. But yeah, ultimately, it's you're giving expression to what's inside of you, and and that's something that's that's very personal. And uh, oftentimes it, uh, you know, the idea of just being like, yeah, well, your vision sucks. Like, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't think that's very nice. You know? Yeah. You know, it's all about it's constructive, actually, it's actually, constructive criticism, you know? Yeah. It's, it's ahead, actually man. very refreshing to hear you say that because I, I think in this internet culture, um, you can forget who's behind the screen. Like I remember there was a, I had a job or a client I was working for a few years ago and I, I was basically like, um, uh, doing emails uh, to various people who are uh, uh, part of the um, part of the organization and uh, the guy I was working for came to me and said listen like when you're writing an email to someone just remember there's someone behind the screen you're writing to because you yeah. can forget sometimes that you know you, you can forget you might come across as rude or you know um, not caring about their time um, yeah. and I think it's really important especially in this age that we live in to remember you said something very nice which is that you know when you write a, a, a review it's like you're in a Starbucks speaking to the filmmaker directly um, yeah. and I think that is is, is is so refreshing especially because so many reviews I've read are just really harsh and it's like you know they're, 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 their tone of voice is almost like they're, they're offended uh, by what they've yeah. seen uh, and there right. is that carelessness um, which is it's strange because it's also you know art out there for consumption. You know, I don't think they they I don't think they're bad intention or, or they hope to hurt the feelings of the filmmakers. I think there's you know expressing their views on art. Um, so it is definitely a refreshing to to hear you say that. Um, I'm also interested uh, in knowing that you know in in understanding as you um, progressed throughout your career as a film critic, as you you know, mashallah, been written for many uh, great. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, websites and papers. You know, you've also uh, become an RT top ticket, uh, top critic, if I'm not mistaken, which I do want to talk about after this. Is pretty, pretty cool. Um, has that in any way changed how you watch films now? Um, so, for example, you know, growing up, you had a when you went to see a film. I know you were always very analytical of films. I'm guessing, uh, but in terms of like now, the way you watch films, has it changed now? Knowing that you might have to write, or you'll have to write a review on it, or discuss it mm -hmm. later, does it change your viewing experience uh, of films? Oh, no, only in the sense that this has sort of been my gear for so long at this point. I mean, we're talking, you know, I've been I've been writing 
for print or 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 the web for uh more than 25 years at this point right so that that's always been my gear but that being said you know um when I started writing for the San Francisco Chronicle, you know, my editor, he said something that, that I found very valuable. You know, he's like, I know you, you might feel like you need to write up to the, the venue or kind of change the way you style, your, 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 your style of writing. And, and he said, remember, we brought you on because of your writing. So we've, mm. you've already got the job. So we right. want you to just be you, just do what you already do. And that was very helpful. Uh, but, but, to me, that's less a reflection of me being awesome or whatever, but it is a reflection of sort of the trajectory I've tried to follow. And I, I, I certainly am never content in my own film knowledge. And I try to expand my film knowledge. I try to, there's, there's, you know, there's holes I have in my experience, things I haven't seen. And I'm constantly trying to, to watch older films and things like that, just that I haven't seen, because that's what's going to make whatever critique I have to offer more valuable. Um, you know, and certainly, you know, I look back at things I wrote, you know, as a high schooler or something, and I say, oh, it's well written, but God, I don't, I don't agree with the critique at all, you know, because my, mm -hmm. my opinion changed. And that's the other thing, actually, is it's, it's important to help. Uh, it's, it's important to think of a film review, not as sort of a testament for all time, but mm -hmm. it's a reflection of that particular moment. And I say that constantly. I mean, I have watched films that I've given negative reviews to that I rewatch later, and I'm like, you know, I was I was wrong about that. It was I, I I missed this and that and the other thing, or vice versa. I was over the moon about it, and then my my perspective changes. I mean, that's we would hope. I mean, that's just uh, part of our life experience, right? I mean, we don't uh, the, uh, our views are rarely frozen in amber, especially when it mm -hmm. comes to to something as fluid as as film. You know, what I think rarer are the films that throughout your entire life you've had an absolutely consistent view of right and those are the real so, gems yeah so it's like let me ask you this adding on to Nuri's question so uh you know you've been doing this for a while and as the film world transitions into into more you know inclusivity of like let's just say muslim representation now right in the mm -hmm. last i would what, like what like 10 years i would say right when we're starting to introduce yeah. this stuff now, when you look at films that have that representation um, and portraying, you know, either it's Muslims or other underrepresented individuals and, and groups, right? Is your critique still the same as it huh. would be any other film? Or is your critique different being, you know, an underrepresented individual as well? Yeah. Watching somebody like you on film and now your mind goes to, okay, now I have to kind of critique this because this mm -hmm. individual is praying wrong on film and that's incorrect <laughs> or this individual yeah. is the villain and they're always the villain it's, it's so typical that okay yeah you know in the bodyguard he's gonna it's, it's definitely gonna be her and he's, she's definitely like a hijabi and you know what i mean like <laughs> as we as we transition into like new age and new time um how has your craft changed with the change of time in film yeah no that's man that's a great question yeah that's i mean it's it's a when you think about it, it's a good problem to have, right? Like it's a good problem. It's an excellent, excellent problem to have. You yeah. Know? I, even as a filmmaker, it's an excellent problem because now we can go back and correct it and do something different. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. You know, I, I, uh, I often point to um, having watched the movie The Delta Force uh, when I was five or six, um, and uh, you know, for those of your listeners that don't know, that's a Chuck Norris movie with Muslim terrorists, right. and and that was really my first exposure to like Muslims on screen it was like oh well it's these white guy with brown face and they're like by the beard of the prophet and they're you know uh, killing civilians or whatever and i was just like right, that's right. what it is you know and it, i mean that's like a, that defines a big chunk of my childhood i remember watching robin hood prince of thieves in in 1991 and and i can never have a negative view of that movie because they had azim and and he was uh he was robin hood's right hand it wasn't little john it was robin hood he was the guy and and I, my expectation was oh he's the guy who's going to betray robin hood because that's what movies have taught me to do right um and and so so i for for decades i, I was like that's all we had we had morgan freeman as azim and that's we we liked it you know <laughs> and so now we got like ms marvel and this and that and the other thing it's amazing right, right. right i think it's great um i think that I, i'm certainly grateful for all of that but i i think my job as a critic if i'm if i'm tasked with with uh offering an analysis of these films is uh to point out 
the stuff that makes me that I'm excited about. But to ju- to be just as critical as I would be for anything else, I think it does it does what I do and what the filmmaker does a disservice to be like, well, because of like a positive portrayal, I'm gonna look past this other stuff or what have you. You know, I just did a review of. Uh, of uh, Ms. Marvel, you know, the right. uh, for 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 the for the Chronicle, and uh, you know, I, uh, the the review was overall was positive, but it's still kind of like you know, I, I got to wait to see where this is going. But obviously, just seeing seeing sort of this Daisy family and seeing them conversing in shorthand that's just so common to me. And there's the Eid festival and everything else. I mean, it's amazing. I can I can't even imagine this uh, 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 ten years ago. You know, I I, I I've said this before. You know, in 2010, which was not that long ago, they made The Prince of Persia, starring Jake Gyllenhaal. Yeah. <laughs> Right, Jake Gyllenhaal, who's very much not Persian. I mean, it wasn't that long ago when you think about it, and it was it was not even like it was not even commented on, really. Right, you know, like a f- couple years later, they made Aladdin, and yeah. it was like, oh, we have to cast yeah, yeah. Uh, people of color because it's just, oh, I mean, it's inappropriate to cast a right, white right. person. It's like, well, y'all cast Jake Gyllenhaal <laughs> as Dan oh, Dan or whatever he was. <laughs> you know? Oh man, go ahead, think, go ahead. No, you're good. Go ahead. No, go ahead. So yeah, so you know. Basically, adding on onto that, there's been you know like things. That, I mean, I'm drawing a blank because whenever we have like these these, these intellectual conversations, you always draw a blank, like whatever. But like you know, like Miss <laughs> Marvel and like these other like the Night of, for example, and like Riz Ahmed's yeah. movies and, and whatnot. Yeah. Now that a lot of these you know represent represented movies are coming out, um, is there is there like from from a you know, I don't just consider you like a film critic, but I f- just consider you as somebody like who just knows a lot about film. You know, is this the direction you you like to see? I, I, obviously, I, everybody's gonna say, yeah, this is great. This is the direction we should go. But I, I guess my question to to dive in deeper, it's it's kind of what's missing. Like, what mm. kind of character portrayal is missing? What what's missing for that piece? Where like, okay, like we're actually now moving in the right direction. Because I, I personally, as a filmmaker, I feel like. Okay, yeah, we're on screen, but that doesn't necessarily mean we're moving in the right direction. Yeah. So, is, is there? Do you feel the same way? And if so, if, if you don't feel like we're moving in the right direction, what piece is missing? Uh, and if you are moving in the right right direction, you know, why do you feel that way? Yeah. Well, well I I think one thing I've I'd like to see, and and uh, it's not to say my experience with, with viewing these things is all encompassing, so I may have missed something, but but what I would like is. Uh, to to have at least a few characters whose Muslimness is not uh, their their very Muslimness is not a point of critique. In other words, oh oh uh, he's Muslim but he doesn't practice. Oh so he's okay. Like the, I I want to yeah. see I want to see a character who's a practicing Muslim and it's not a big deal. And it's instead what we tend to see is a little bit of a lampshade hung on it, uh, and that that beca- that becomes a a red flag if you will. Right. And 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 again, this is look, there's room for all kinds. There's a spectrum of, of Muslims. There's a spectrum of, uh, of, of practice. Right. So I think there's room for, for non-practicing Muslims or or people who are not as uh, diligent in their practice. But what I want is something that says, yeah, but even if you practice, that's not you a can, warning you sign. You're not a, yeah. You know, Um I, th- I think there's a little bit of that with, with in Ms. Marvel. You know, you've got the the, the brother uh, Amir, who's played by Sagar Sheikh, who does a really good job. And I think they've they've done a, a pretty good job in in the episodes I've seen so far of making him a little bit more nuanced. But even still, it's it's through the perspective of the sister who's looking at her brother's like, oh man, he's always like praying or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And 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 I'm not saying that perspective is not valid because there's absolute validity to that. But I also would like some expression to the idea that you know what. Most Muslims pray. Most Muslims are doing this. Most Muslims don't eat pork and whatever, and it's like not a big deal, you know. That I would right. like to see more of that. Uh, not to say that there is none. But I I don't know. Nothing comes to mind off the top of my head. But I'd like to see more of that. I'm so glad yeah. you said that. I actually wrote an article about that um, uh, for um, it was uh, Midnight Mass, which I'm, I'm sure you've seen it, right? Midnight Mass. Mm-hmm. With, um, yeah. Yeah. So you have Sheriff Hassan, who like that that character for me was, was just phenomenal because like there was. Um, you know, there was no, like you said, his religiousness wasn't a point of contention, nor was his character about his 
religiousness, if that made sense. Like the yeah, whole yeah. show was about religion and faith generally. But his battle with faith wasn't about, oh, do I believe in God? Do I, should I pray? No, it's more like mm-hmm. it's a deeper battle of, yeah. you know, I, I remember his point of contention was, no, uh, it, it, it's, it's not fair that they get cured and your mom didn't get cured when she died. That's not how God works. Right, right. That was his yeah. battle with faith. That's a nice, deep, nuanced, you know, beautiful depiction of faith where it's like, oh, it's not about him being religious, not being religious. He's religious, as many Muslims are. Um, and, and like you said, it, it, it was it's just so scarce to see that. Uh, in film to the point where it's like as a Muslim as a practicing Muslim uh, sometimes you feel like you can come you can you can play here you can come here but as we want not as you are you know you can come here if yeah. you're this kind of Muslim you can come if you're yeah. you know a bit cooler you don't you don't you don't necessarily have to stop everything you're doing to pray you know you don't necessarily have to adhere to Islam <laughs> you know you're, you're pretty cool you might drink from time to time or smoke some marijuana you know you're okay you're, okay, you're a cool guy you know now you're one of us yeah and I, yeah. I, I, I don't think it's a malicious thing either I think you know film generally in Hollywood is a very liberal movement a very liberal society and Muslims are much more conservative so sometimes it can be hard to to, to portray um, not hard but I I do kind of understand why that the, the, there's a lot more liberal, let's say, representation of Muslims. Uh, but like you said, we do want to see more practicing Muslims in film. And like you said, not people who aren't, uh, you know, uh, judged by their religiousness. They just happen to be great characters. Um, yeah. You know, a James Bond who prays and doesn't womanize. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm up for that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, right. No. Double O eight. It would be pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to uh, move the conversation along to uh, something I've seen uh, on Twitter uh, from you uh, and something I feel like a lot of uh, critics are facing, which is, uh, especially in this post, uh, uh, The Last Jedi uh, kind of world, uh, this crazy <laughs> toxic fandom uh, that we get uh, online. Hasne, I'm not sure if, you, if you've seen this stuff, but it, it can be absolutely crazy. Like, it's absolutely crazy. So, obviously, we have The Last Jedi that came out, um, and that really kind of unearthed this kind of uh, let's say war that goes on online. Uh, between, oh, what are you talking you know, about? People were so well behaved, and, <laughs> and <laughs> they had so much. I'm not on Twitter because of this. It's, it's <laughs> stay off. Bro, it, 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 thing is, it, it, I, I see it in other circles. I see it in politics. You know, I see it, for example, in religion. But I didn't think I'd see it when it comes to film and art. And when it comes to, especially something like Star Wars, for example, which is just a, an example I'm giving. Um, yeah. People can be really harsh and you know, really uh, rude and disrespectful and. And almost like claim claim a certain sense of ownership over yeah. an intellectual right. product, over an IP. Um, so how do you? I mean, firstly, how do you deal with that? Uh, and secondly, how does it, if at all, uh, affect you, uh, knowing that you might put out an opinion, let's say on Twitter yeah. or an article, and just be <laughs> attacked uh, for it? Well, I think I think if we're talking about Star Wars in particular, and we can broaden it out more generally, but yeah, I mean certainly what i've seen of star wars fandom over the last several years and and yeah i I, you can probably pinpoint it to uh exploding after the last jedi but it's been in 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 existence for a long time yeah people people have this i think you said ownership i think that people feel like oh i've put in my time as a fan therefore my opinion is more valid than yours and you say well no your opinion is your opinion Right. And it's no more or less valid than anyone else's. Your opinion matters to you. So you can make a determination about what you like or don't like. But but I think that me personally, I've encountered these people, but you know, they tend to tell on themselves. And so I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty heavy with the mute button. I'm just like, all right, well, <laughs> you're ridiculous, mute. I don't need to see you anymore. And I, this is me when it comes to Twitter. I generally avoid blocking people because i feel like that gives them a oh win. Yeah, yeah yeah right yeah, so yeah, i'm like yeah <laughs> right so i'm like mute you can scream into the void all you want i don't ever need to to see what you have to say uh and and yeah i mean the last jedi is a good example i mean i i honestly i really like that movie and i've been uh, as i said movie loved it yeah i think i've been a star yeah. wars fan all my life now now i'm in a weird situation where i i really like last jedi and i'm like fine with the rise of skywalker so that's like my spectrum i'm like eh, you know and and so i i get it from this group of fans or that group of fans you know and and ultimately the, this is where i'm at with it. i'm like look star wars for me is very specific star wars star wars for me is those three original movies right. that's my emotional attachment that's my connection and if i want that experience again i can always put on those movies and i'll feel that same way so everything else is just more time in this universe and i enjoy the universe so i don't mind spending time in it it, nothing's going to make me feel the same. It's a lot like Jurassic Park for me, honestly. Mm. Um, and and so I think I think people who've made it their identity, people who've made it their own personal brand, 
uh, they they you know need to need to uh, you know unplug a little bit. But then but then there's another side. Of, there is the hate economy. There's the hate economy, and we can't we can't. Uh, un- undervalue what that's doing to discourse because you have you have uh, bloggers and YouTube creators who their whole deal is to get people pissed off, mm, right? And so they want to spin everything they can in as negative a way because negativity drives traffic, negativity drives clicks, and that's what they're counting on. So it's very cynical. And when you talk about politics, it's very related. It's the same. It's the same thinking. It's the same economy. And and I think Star Wars, to a large extent, has become overcome with that. I mean, you know, just a couple of weeks ago, you and McGregor had to put out a video, being like, "Hey, y'all, like, stop being racist," wow. you know, and you know, and because 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 one of the characters right, yeah. in the Obi Wan Kenobi show, she's black, and and oh my gosh, you know, her mere presence means that the show has gone woke. And here is Obi Wan Kenobi himself being like, "Guys, knock it off." And I'm like, "Don't you feel embarrassed?" Like. <laughs> you're you're being dressed down by Obi Wan Kenobi, you know, and and that's just kind of where we're at, unfortunately. You know, I I think it's not unique to Star Wars. I think Star Wars is probably its most most uh, uh, vociferous, you know. But but you know, I read an interview. I think it was with James Mangold a couple of years ago. He's like, I don't even want to work on a Star Wars movie. Like, yeah. who wants to deal with that? Who wants to deal yeah. with all the crap? Yeah. And I'm like, that's what's going to happen. You're just going to you're you're going to filter out all these people because I'll tell you what, Ryan Johnson is one of the great filmmakers out there right now, and you think he wants to go anywhere near this again? You know, right? You know, it's he's like, I'm just going to make my Knives Out movies and cash out. I, I had the same thing about um, who is it? I forgot the names. Uh, DB Weiss, I think, is the, the Game of Thrones uh, showrunners. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, because Benny at one point, they're, they're, yeah, at, at, at one point they were um, you know opposed uh, to uh, making a new trilogy for Star Wars. And basically, from what I've read, they're just like, no, life's too short. <laughs> We're not dealing with this again. You know, we yeah. don't want to uh, deal with that toxic fan. So they, it, it, they dealt with it already with Game of Thrones. Yeah, I mean, exactly, my God. There you go. yeah. yeah. So it, it, it's crazy. So like, what does that tell you about, I guess, um, uh, let me rephrase that question. How does that, if at all, change the way perhaps you write about film the way you expect to be uh you know it, it's funny because sometimes film critics can also be crit- crit- critiqued right especially yeah. in this world that we talked about now where it's like there there is more of an apparent disparity sometimes between what the critic says and what the the the, uh, the viewers are saying um so when you're writing a review when you write when you when you're speaking about a film how much of you is like oh you know you want to have a bit of respect to the filmmaker but how much of you is like okay what if I get attacked for this? What if what are people mm. are gonna say uh, when I put this review out on of, of Star yeah. Wars and I said this? You know, how how, how does that impact you? How much does that live rent free in, in your mind at all? Mm. Um, mm-hmm. How much does that kind of you know guide what you do? Uh, so as far as getting attacked, it it doesn't impact me at all. I mean, just being honest, because I'm like these are these are voices in the void. Mm. They don't affect me. I'm like this is my job. I'm doing my job, and I'm I'm gonna. M- the only concern I have when I write my review is I want to be uh, as honest about it as possible. You know, that's uh, you know, it's funny is I I get this a lot. Oh, you must be uh, you know like uh, you you're on Disney's payroll. That's why you're like getting and 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 I'm like what like <laughs> Disney's paying me. You know, like I, I'm this nobody from the Bay Area. Like you know what I mean? Like people have funny things. Oh, you get perks. They send you free stuff. I'm like, look, man, I'm I'm 40 plus. I got five kids. I don't need free stuff. I need money. Like that's how I yeah. you know this is my job. You know, and, and I would and I would tell like, them I'm, I wish I'm on Disney's payroll. Yeah, I was just gonna point. say right? That's <laughs> right? Sign me up. That's phenomenal. I'll do that. I mean, Sign me and, up, and, please. And, and this is the thing, right? Because I I do I do take my reputation seriously to the extent that I don't want people to think I'm in any way compromised or anything like that so i do take that seriously and you know mm. i don't want to reflect badly on the chronicle or anybody who i'm representing so so that's that's my that's my primary focus uh so as far as the haters go i mean gosh you know i've over the last couple of years uh i've had people call me a lucas film shill which like whatever i've had people call me a Zack snyder hater which i'm not because i've liked most of his movies but i said like one or two things critical and i'm, I'm still dealing with with crap from that you know wow. and you just real, you know you realize and I, and th- this is going to sound name dropping i don't mean it that way but but um uh, uh a couple years ago i i speaking of brian johnson i got to talk to him this was after knives out and uh, you know i said you know i i really i i had a profound emotional reaction when i watched uh, the last jedi and how much that that movie meant to me and i asked him i was like how do you deal with all the crap and and he said something that i i i found very useful he's like 
Well, what you what you realize is that, like, there, like, big picture wise, it's it's not that many people, right? It's 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 people who are representing that they have their own issue and their own hate, and it's not it's it's not reflective of the majority of people, hmm. you know. And and he what 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 he said is just like, you just have to put it in perspective, right? He he's like, before Star Wars. If he got one or two negative messages, he would take it very personally, right. Mm. right? And then after Star Wars, it multiplies, and he realizes that, like it's, it's, it's not even about him. It's just, it's about whatever issues people are bringing in, and so it's easy to just compartmentalize it. And and he said, you know, proportionally, you realize there's there's more people are either going to have a positive reaction or a neutral reaction. And that's helpful. And I, I mean, that's as a filmmaker, as a writer, I don't have to deal with the majority of that, you know, because no, nobody really knows who I am. So that I have, I do have the benefit of anonymity. But I mean, the internet is something that brings out people's inner negativity. People feel yeah. free to do that. Uh, it's it's the yelpification of life. Right. Yeah. And so, and that's just a, a helpful thing to bear in mind. Yes. Yeah, so let me just quickly ask you this, because you know, we're, as we're speaking about your professional career versus like fan-based individuals um you know i mean I, unless i'm wrong or educate me like i don't think people who become critics go to school and study like f being a film critic or have an mm -hmm. undergrad in that so there's there's some sort of education that comes with that mm -hmm. and some sort of professionalism that comes with that so can you kind of walk us through like like how does one educate themselves to become one and then kind of separate themselves from being like okay like i'm a professional critic yeah. And I'm being critiqued by other professionals. So huh. I hit a level where like basically viewers and fan individuals don't really matter to me because I'm doing this on a professional scale at this point. Huh. Um, well, and first, I, I, I don't want it to sound like people who, who read my reviews don't matter. I, I hope I didn't give that impression because obviously <laughs> they do. But like people who are just out with the knives out at some point, you have yeah. to... to to, but I, but out with the knives out you said the pun oh pun I, I didn't mean to say <laughs> <that>. <laughs> um so me personally you know i studied film i i went to columbia college in chicago and i did film and video production for my undergrad gotcha. okay. uh, so so on the technical side that that's my education but in addition to that i mean all throughout that time i was writing and i wrote i wrote for my high school paper i wrote for my college paper after that i was writing on my own i had a, a web a website where i would post reviews and so it was just honing the craft you know i mean i i made it a point to review to review as many releases as possible i don't do it as much anymore because i just i don't have the time unfortunately but but that became a standing body of work that i was then able to parlay into writing opportunities for you know for huffington post and then philly weekly et cetera, et cetera, and and, and until where i'm at now and um but even now, again, as I said earlier, like I, I never stop my education. You know, it's not like, oh, yeah. okay, here I am. It's great. You know, sitting back in my chair, I, I, I constantly, I, and and as filmmakers, I'm sure you you guys can can appreciate this. You know, I grapple with imposter syndrome, like something vicious, man. I mean, all the yeah. time. I, I mean, just just uh, recently, I was uh, I reviewed the new Scream, and it, you know my review was on the front page of, of Date Book, which is the entertainment section of the Chronicle. And I'm just nice. like, how in the like, what am I doing? There? Like, they're gonna find out that this guy <laughs> snuck in the back door and is reviewing movies for them. You know what I mean? Because like, I remember reviewing the first Scream in high school. Wow. And now here I'm in the paper, and like my brain can't even process that, you know. And I guess on some level, I hope I never lose that. You know, I, I, I think I, I, there's a little bit of imposter syndrome that's kind of healthy, I think. <laughs> no, you need to, I mean, I think uh, one thing I've learned, so I'm, obviously I'm, 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 I'm like a freelance videographer filmmaker, so I'm not really like in deep in the indie filmmaking uh, circle, more like on the like commercial um, sure, sure. kind of side. But it, it's funny because like one lesson I've always learned when it comes to uh, this kind of grind is always say yes to everything. Yeah, and I so agree. you so so there is always that imposter syndrome. Whenever I say can, whenever whenever I'm asked, can you do this? I'm like, yes, 100, percent I can. Then I'll yep. just dive into YouTube and figure out how to do it. You know, but it, it's good because then you 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 grow out of your your comfort zone and you and you grow out, out of your skin and you become better, which which I think which I think is is, yep. is really important. And you know, something that your career has kind of shown uh, as well, which is which is really wonderful. Um, I do feel like there is a sense of 
uh, I've, I've, I don't know you personally, but just based on what I see on Twitter, there's a sense of childlike wonder that is still with you somewhere, based on the fact that you're still buying action figures, you know, you're still uh, buying comics. I think that's nice. absolutely incredible. Um, which, which I think is is important when you're in this world of loving film. You know, you can still sit down, watch Star Wars, and get that kind of you know sense of oh wow, look, there's a Millennium, there's a Millennium Falcon, and you know, there's you know the uh, the power converter line and whatever else there is. You still have that kind of sense of of wonder in you. How do you kind of try to keep that? You said you saw your father now. I think you said four kids or five kids. Um, I have I have four boys, one girl. Four boys, so five kids in total. How do you? Uh, not trying to call you out your age, but how do you keep that sense of childlike wonder in you as you progress uh, in your life and as you face life's challenges and difficulties and, and wonders as well? You know, honestly, it's it's funny because you talk about your own experience with Jurassic Park and uh, my oldest, he's 15 now, but um, in 2013, you know, they re-released uh, Jurassic Park to theaters uh, in 3D for the 20th anniversary. And so they had a, a special press screening for that. And I took, I took uh, my oldest, who at the time he was six, hmm. and I took him with me. And I still remember, I was like watching him more than I was watching the movie because he was so, like he had never seen it, you know, he was so engrossed. And, and I still remember when the, the T-Rex, you know, comes into the van, remember the, when it comes out of the, 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 the blockade area. And, uh, you know, again, it's in 3D and my kid was like cl- trying to climb over his seat. It was so scared. And he was like this, you know, cause it's 3D. And, and so when, with the new trilogy that's been coming out, you know, we've gone to see each of them. And for this latest one, uh, I really, I went to experience it through him, you know, mm. because he, he said, he's like, you know, Jurassic Park is still my favorite movie of all time, you mm. know? And honestly, that's been my joy as a dad is like exp- introducing them to a lot of this stuff and just seeing it from their perspective, you know, like uh, last week, uh, my 13 year old, it was just he and I and uh, home alone. And he was like, uh, he's like, Hey, put on the flash Gordon. Like I want to watch flash Gordon. He's never seen flash Gordon. This is the 1980 movie. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, all right, you know, and, you know, it's a very cheesy, specific kind of movie, very cult favorite. And I was like, all right, it feels like he's like the right age to just take it at face value. And it ended. And he was like, "Eh, it was a lot of fun, you know, and I was thinking, I was like, this is a little, it's a little stick pin in time for him. Like he's going to have some kind of association with this movie that he'll be able to revisit it later. And he'll be able to uh, call back to that, you know, and that's very much how I am with, with a lot of this stuff. Like, it's just, uh, I think I think film has the ability to transport and and to reframe and to and to to fascinate, you know. And it doesn't matter if it's if it's a big blockbuster type movie or something more thoughtful, you know. Uh, whether it's a documentary or or uh, an action movie, you can still get something positive out of it, you know. And it's it's all about the frame of reference that you have, you know. I, uh, yeah, I do. I still I buy toys and all this. Stuff. You know, it's funny because my my wife gives me ungodly amounts of grief rightly so by the way she's 100 percent right because it's, it's, at this point it's like a problem like i've got more stuff than i have room for you know um but <laughs> i mean I, uh, I i buy these hot toys i don't know if you're familiar with them but they're like these 12 inch they're like high-end figures like you right, have right. to pay for them in installments like that's how oh. high-end they are you know yeah, yeah. and and it's totally one of those things where my wife would be like hey how much was this and i'd be like hey so what are we doing tonight <laughs> like, you know <laughs> <laughs> but you know what's funny i'll tell you my kids know they can play with their toys don't touch baba's hot toys like they know yeah <laughs> it's, 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 it's funny because growing up i had a a, a massive uh, transformers toy collection because i got into oh, nice. beast wars so i had like a and literally it's it, they were literally in my, my my parents attic for like um a while uh, and I had literally, like, I remember the, the Generation 1 re-releases. I had Optimus Prime, Ultraman. I had, I had everything. Yeah, um, nice. Bunch this is like mid-90s? Mid, mid yeah, so 98, 99, like okay. that kind of time. Yeah. Um, and uh, li- literally recently, I remember moving to, uh, moving to the States. Um, so I uh, I was clearing out my parents' attic. I was like, you know what? I can't keep this lying here. I sold it all on eBay for not a lot of money. And yeah. it's funny because, like, till today, I still get the desire Whenever I walk into to Walmart or Target and I see a sound wave, the perfect one, I'm like, <laughs> I want to get this. It's twenty five dollars. I can afford it, but uh, I I put it back down. Like you know, I I, I can't I, I can't I can't justify it to myself. You know, yeah. So it's like, it, it, but it, it's crazy how that kind of like childlike one that never uh, leaves you, and it's just so interesting that the kind of first formative years of your life 
will always stay with you for the rest of your life. Right. You know, just right. just by way of buying all those toys when I was young, until I'm 65, so 75, when I when I when I see a Transformers I'm like, you know, I'm going to get this one this time. Maybe one day we'll totally uh, <laughs> yeah. let's see how and it, it goes. It's 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 the packaging. I mean, you just if you know, nowadays there's this vogue for like retro style packaging. And it's cuz right. they know what they're doing, right? That you look at that and man, a bunch of neurons start firing in your head. <laughs> Nostalgia like, oh, cells. Yeah. It is. Yeah, yeah, so- I mean, it, and it and it works. It works. Yes. You know. So I just want to like just one last question and, and then you can take it. So like childlike wonder, you know, um, it's, it's kind of cute hearing, you know, you guys is childlike wonder when it comes to Jurassic Park and like Star Wars, because I'll be honest with you, gr- growing up, at, you know, my childhood was more gangs of New York, you know, being okay. ba- born and raised in New York is m- more like catch me if you can. So I didn't really grow up with, with like the animation, which is why as a filmmaker today, and really knows this about me like watching like superhero shows and like movies and like animated stuff it's not really my cup of tea i'm more into like mm-hmm. drama and like real life situations Gritty. yeah <laughs> gritty film yeah. yeah yeah so you know speaking about so you're, you're you know, making me feel old because i was already no, 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 no. <laughs> i'm just like damn all right <laughs> <laughs> No, it's just, it's just. I guess the environment kind of cultivates what kind, of, what, what, what you like and what you kind of like totally. gravitate towards. So, you know, with your kids watching Jurassic Park and like all that stuff, I guess what I'm getting to is when have what was the last movie or what movie have you seen where it wasn't more the or maybe it could have been like you know your childhood and whatnot, but something that just unexpectedly you know got you like god conscious or like made you think of like your faith unexpectedly oh, that's a that's a big detour but i have a question then wow question <laughs> I, I come i come you know yeah it's blazing. like <laughs> you went here and it went whoop <laughs> yeah you know, that's that's good I, I, i'll be honest with you the question has been on my mind for a while and i know nuri just like will not stop until i stop him <laughs> so that's why i had to ask it right away <laughs> not trying to ruin the fun but you know that's why I took a shift. Oh, like, hey, like, you guys watch nice Star question. Wars. I watch gangs, you know, gangs in I New York. I can't be like, when I watched the first Transformers and I saw Optimus Prime, I was like, subhanAllah. That's not going to work. It can. It's up to you, bro. It's your experience. <laughs> yeah, like, I'll give, I'll give you a quick example. Like, I, I'm watching Peaky Blinders season six, the newest oh, one that nice. recently came out, right? And this episode, this whole season, is I, it out I don't Netflix, know what it is. Way. It's out on Netflix. It came, it's it came been, out It's been out in the UK month, for like, time. I, I, yeah, I was wondering. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I mean, yeah. I work nine to five, so by the time I get home, I don't even know what's on at this point. I just like whatever's <laughs> on on Netflix. So I'm watching Peaky Blinders season six, which is the latest season, right? And from my recollection, the seasons before that, then it was more about basically what the story and like, you know, building an empire. And this season, slowly like the church is creeping in because now they're in, now they're like in America. And slowly like a lot of, a lot of like, do you believe in God as has been creeping in? And it's just like, then for me, it was just like, oh, like, okay like you know i I, i'm starting to correlate more with like Hmm. the storyline the theme you know gratitude the hustle Hmm. and then god consciousness at the the same time so it's like from when i look at peaky blinders i'm like this is such a gangster show and then now all of a sudden it's just like hmm you know like i had nothing and now i have everything and i can just walk into a theater and just pay for any any show and just watch it at this point whereas before it's just like my parents was like, yeah, no, you're not, you're not even getting the toy for twenty five dollars. Like, mm-hmm. they, they would have get, you know. Yeah, that's and so, so like, many, yeah. so many Daisy kids can relate to that. Yeah, yeah. So you know, <laughs> you know, like, um, you know, just, just you know, your thoughts there, you know, anything that hit you in, in regards. Yeah, to Yeah, well, you know, there's, there's, there's a, a couple of shows that have really uh, elevated the form for me recently. Um, one is for all mankind it's a show oh on, uh, i love that show. i'm so glad you watched that show love that yeah show. I, I haven't seen the newest season yeah i haven't oh. watched the latest but but uh it's extraordinary i mean it really like and it's it's by ron moore right who created battlestar galactica the, the the reboot of battlestar galactica and uh um it's just doing so much you know i mean it's it's uh I mean, I think God consciousness might be might be too broad a thing to affix to it, but it certainly it it makes it it at least for me it makes you aware of just how amazing this concept of space travel is, and right. uh, makes me sad honestly that we haven't done more. Like, you know, that we need this alternate history to kind of show yeah, us yeah. like what, all sure. the things we could have done. You know? Yeah, it, it, it's funny because like, um, like just winding down and, and, and having this this conversation of like faith and film I, I can i could talk about this forever because for me 
it's like for me they've literally gone hand in hand like i thought i, I, sure. I when, when i when i opened with jurassic park on one hand yeah it's just a film that's just a film on the other hand i said that those memories of being in my grandparents house um you know when i was young uh and and, and being the like the, the 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 formidable foundational years of my life uh, bringing me where i am today and there's just so much of experience and faith and and you know uh tragedy and 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 bliss and beauty all intertwined in that story um and so for me it's like it's broader than faith but it's also you know just like going into films and and, and on one hand and and, and and being like almost prodded at who you are especially with a good film it's like it's asking yeah. who are you you know absolutely um, which which is which is where i find you know i, I don't know if you're into terence malick's malick films for example yeah, yeah but the thin red line the new world oh, those aren't films for me those are those are like those are faith experiences like you go into that you come out like challenged to your soul in regards to who you are um and i, and I always uh sorry like just before you jump in i always talk about how lost for me for example i think lost was a bit more on the nose when it comes to faith but that <laughs> series for me told me more about letting go and having faith in things than any sheikh or imam in my community has done honestly <laughs> that's and, great and I, I i i always joke about how it took a, a jewish fellow uh, damien Lindelof, to do that for a muslim kid you know and mm-hmm. in, in, in creating that film and, and, and it is beautiful it's, it's it shows you just how much you can touch the soul uh through film and tv and right. what's also beautiful about it is that you can be an atheist and sit down and watch let's say for example lost and be like oh mm-hmm. how great is you know the human mind you can be a muslim yeah. and be like oh how great is allah you can be a christian how great is jesus and, you know you or you can be an agnostic and say how great is you know everything and I, I think that's what's so beautiful about film is that it's it's this like playing field of of souls expressing themselves mm-hmm. uh and we are taking in that information and processing it the way kind of we know how if that makes sense um and and that for me is why i always say that you know film is almost like a religion for me because yeah. it, it, it is where I take, um, you know, the, these kind of undefinable uh, strands of energy that become faith and quote unquote God consciousness uh, as well. So, so you're going to say something? I, 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 I oh, yeah. Well. Well, well, you mentioned Thin Red Lion. And, and yeah, I mean, I remember watching that in the theater. And that was probably the most I had ever been completely just transported by a film mm-hmm. after that time where, I mean, it was just it was the mood and the the uh the the poetry of of the of the text and whatnot i mean it was it was a fully transporting experience you know and it was something where i would tell people like i i don't even know what i can say you just have to watch it you know uh and then you mentioned lost and you know i i wrote yeah. my master's thesis on lost that's wow. actually <laughs> so send I, me that <laughs> i've seen lost about 10 times by the way i think uh, in many ways uh, my, you know my approach when when covering that show was specifically uh the character of Said and how you know that was a big deal for me you know here's 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 the muslim guy i mean this is just a couple years after 9 11 right and he's iraqi but he's you know he's not a bunch of stereotypes he's heroic he's complicated etc etc i was like this is a big deal you know and and so the whole locus of of my uh analysis was specifically through the character of saeed and how uh the portrayal of of muslims and and uh, middle eastern characters uh uh has changed over time and that i argue and i still argue i think overall it's positive it's more positive now than it was uh 30 uh, 30 40 years ago i think i think mm. we ha- we in the muslim community have a lot to be grateful for that doesn't mean it uh, can't be better it can but look at how much more representation we have behind the camera and it's only going to grow so it's going to get better amazing final question i'll ask you uh, before we let you go um Ask the question to all of our guests. Spirituality is something that means different things to different people, right? It's, it's, for some people, it's, it's very practical. For some people, it's more, you know, maybe like a, a, a state of mind. How does, however you define spirituality, uh, intertwine with or impact your your art, which is your your, your, your critique of film? And your general <sighs> love of film, I'd say, as well. Yeah. Well, I think that... Um... You know, for for me, it it comes down to, <clears throat> excuse me, what what is something positive I can accomplish with this writing, even if it's even if it's a film review. Um, what what good am I trying to do? Am I trying to can I can I say something 
kind, if nothing else? Can I say something thought provoking? Can I say something that will change people's perspective in in uh, uh, some kind of positive way? Uh, I, I don't. That's that's not to to make what I do sound more important than it is, but it's also not trying to minimize what I do. I think everything has its right. place in this ecosystem of ideas, and I I'm privileged to be in a perspective where people are going to read my words because of where my words are printed. And that's something that I take very seriously. And I don't want to ever, uh, you know, be irresponsible with that privilege. Beautiful. Zaki, Beautiful. thanks so much for your time. Uh, if you can let us know where people can, uh, we didn't get a chance to talk about your movie film podcast, um, but let us know where we can hear you, where we can read your stuff uh, and where people can get in contact uh, with you. Yeah, well, again, thank you so much for having me on. This is such a great discussion. I really had such a blast. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at uh, Zaki's Corner. That's the A-K-I-S Corner. Uh, it's also my website, just added .com, although I haven't posted there in a little bit. But you can find my writing at the San Francisco Chronicle and also at IGN. And I uh, co-host uh, the Movie Film Podcast, which you referred to. It's Movie Film, one word. And uh, that is a bi-weekly discussion show where we talk about Hollywood news, new releases. And every other week, we do a commentary track where we will watch a film and talk through it. And as I mentioned earlier, my partner on that show is Brian Hall, who... Uh, I've been fortunate to know for uh, close to 25 years at this point, but he is currently a writer for uh, Star Wars Young Jedi Adventures, which is a new show that's coming up on Disney uh, Plus and Disney Junior next year. So um, we have great discussions. I hope people check it out. I think uh, you'll enjoy it. If you liked any of this, I, I, I hope you'll enjoy that. Exactly. Awesome. I appreciate you. Thank you so much.